Father's Milk Bank Northeast collects donor milk for babies in need. And as WBZ's Katrina Kincaid shows us, it's helping to save very young lives. Tucked away in a small office in Newton is an organization making a big impact, helping over 15,000 prematurely born babies every year. We were just so grateful because then it lifted such a huge burden off of myself. Mother's Milk Bank Northeast provides donor breast milk to babies in fragile health. They were there for Nicole and her family when she delivered her son Dimitri at only 34 weeks. Knowing that there was the option of getting donor milk while I waited for my supply to come in was a huge gift to us. Premature babies' digestive systems can't break down formula, so the donated milk is used as a supplement when a family can't produce their own. Over 80% of NICUs nationwide rely on it, and Mother's Milk Bank Northeast is one of 27 FDA-regulated milk banks. After having such a positive experience, Nicole became a donor when she was able to. I would love for it to become as popular as donating blood, so then other families have access to that milk. For the last few years, she's partnered with the milk bank's Boston and marathon runner Maureen to raise awareness and funds. Building that relationship too just helps solidify to why I run and helps give me that motivation to keep going. A pediatric nurse Maureen originally hadn't heard of the milk bank but after running for them the last three years she wants to make sure people know they're there. To finish is good and knowing that you also did it for a larger cause and you know all the money that you brought in to help you know these fragile babies is is huge. She thinks of the families like Nicole's while training and running the 26.2 miles. It's worth it because I think of the families and what they go through. And for the last two years with Maureen and Nicole's partnership they've exceeded their marathon fundraising goals. In Newton Upper Falls, Katrina Kincaid, WBC News. Very special dog is being remembered in a special way. The statue of Spencer the marathon dog is being unveiled today. I got to take a sneak peek at the project that will be cherished by so many people in the community. For years, Spencer was a fixture along the Boston Marathon route, standing for hours in the sun or the rain, making thousands of runners smile as they passed by him, many even stopping to say hi. We had lines of people when Spencer was with us. I mean, lines of people. We're not talking like three or four people. There was like 20 people deep waiting to take a picture. They're stopping the marathon to take a picture with Spencer. And he loved every second of it. Spencer first started carrying a Boston Strong flag after the Boston Marathon bombings in 2013, offering love and encouragement. Spencer <laughs> totally understood what he was doing, and it made, he knew he made a difference. And he, and he enjoyed doing it. His unwavering support continued every year, even through the pandemic when there weren't any runners. And on social media, Spencer and his sister Penny held signs, reminding their many followers of the date when the days of lockdown all blended together. We, li we lived in a lot of spirits, you know, even, even when we weren't physically able to do it. And um, it, it, it did get a lot of people through some tough times. Spencer was going through a tough time himself in 2020 when he was diagnosed with a tumor. Like when he was suffering and, you know, I thought, like, you know, I could lose him. Um, his job wasn't done. He, he was like, Dad, I'm not going anywhere. Spencer beat the odds and miraculously he was back out on the route the next year, bringing smiles to thousands of people. In 2022, he was named the official dog of the Boston Marathon in a ceremony at the Fairmont Copley Plaza. But Spencer was even more than that. He was a therapy dog, regularly visiting schools, hospitals, and nursing homes. And he became a symbol of hope to others battling cancer, including marathon runner Susan Hurley. I wanted to lift her spirits and I knew that Spencer's a therapy dog. She loves dogs. I contacted Rich and I said, you know, can we do a visit? So we went over, met Spencer and Penny and the kind of the connection and relationship grew from there. Sadly, Spencer passed away from cancer last year. His sister Penny following him a short eight days later. It's amazing how many people reached out after he had passed away. It was I've never seen anything like it. He just, how many people he affected. It was Susan and Trisha who immediately came up with the idea to pay tribute to Spencer with a statue. And they quickly raised the donations they needed from community members. There's no dog that uh, would stand out there like him. And uh, he just, he was just the epitome of what the Boston Marathon stands for. They approached local sculptor Jeff Bucaccio, who has built props for big movies in Hollywood, 
but it's projects like this that mean the most to him. Projects like this are especially special for us here because um, we're able to affect our community. Jeff and his team spent months designing, molding, and perfecting Spencer's statue. He gave us the big reveal at his studio in Canton. There's a team of artists here that really, we all poured our heart into this um, because we knew what Spencer meant to so many people. What details did you really focus on when you were creating his Spencer? His eyes. His eyes. How come? Because they just pull you in. They pull you in and that big beautiful smile. We were honored to be the first to show Spencer's dad how the statue turned out. That's him. That's him. When it came time to find a spot for Spencer, the Ashland Select Board denied the request to put the statue on town property. So residents Robin and Cynthia Hicks offered up a piece of their own private land right across from where Spencer always stood. And what he gave to the, the community and the runners and, and the enthusiasm and just the positivity um, all those years. And just enjoy and reflect. Sit there and think about what this... Think of what, as a human being, you could do what this dog did. Rich's two pups, Jimmy and Jade, are now training to carry on Spencer's beloved tradition, right alongside his gentle spirit, forever part of the Boston Marathon. He was a symbol of hope, unconditional love, and something we should all strive for. He was more than we ever deserved, certainly more than I ever deserved. The statue turned out so beautifully. It will be unveiled to the public in a ceremony at noon today on Franklin Road in Ashland. Anyone can go. Spencer will be out there just in time for the marathon, so the hope is people will continue stopping, take a photo, give him a little pat on the nose. And what I love is Spencer is a symbol of resilience, too, especially mm -hmm. after the marathon bombing. So to have him there forever, that's awesome. Good job. And the hope is his story will get passed down for generations. And I know Jimmy and Jade is going to carry down that <laughs> legacy. Joining us now in studio, you recognize him, President and CEO of the Hoyt Foundation, Russ Hoyt. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. I always say uh, the Hoyt family is kind of woven into the fabric of Marathon Monday. What does it mean for you personally? It's just amazing to see how the city of Boston, all the runners, the world has just taken on the awe of having what Dad and Rick meant to Boston become part of the running community and the fabric, as you said. They both were such an inspiration for everyone every year. I, I know we would all wait for them to pass by. What does it mean to you to be able to continue this legacy and continue to inspire people um, every year at the marathon? It, it truly has given meaning to my life. Um, towards the end, Dad got a little bit of an illness, and I actually took an early retirement, started to spend a lot of time with him, and was hoping to actually have a nice long um, period to work with him, and, and that didn't play out. And um, when he passed, Rick said to me, it's your time. You have to step up. And when your older brother tells you that, you, you do what you're told. You better do it. Um, and it, it's been great because Rick and I were able to really work together for a couple of years after Dad passed. And then, you know, unfortunately, when we lost Rick, it was just sort of a, a shock. We weren't ready for it. Um, but again, stepping forward and saying that I get to continue the legacy of, of not only Dad and Rick, but Mom as well. I mean, my mother changed education so that Rick could get into school. And because Rick was in school, he met a gym teacher who said, you should ask your father to push you in this race. And that's how it all started. I mean, that's how this history built. Incredible, incredible. Um, so I sent out one application, one application only, when I wanted to run the marathon, and that was to Team Hoyt, and you graciously accepted. In about five seconds. <laughs> Not, Chris. <laughs> I'm gonna be do hey, I'm going to be doing my best running for Team Hoyt. Um, this is a big year. This is a big year for Team Hoyt. Ten years since the last of 32 runnings for Dick and Rick, right? Yep, absolutely. So in 2013, um, Dad and Rick were running, and Dad had actually planned to retire, and he didn't tell anybody, not even Rick. Mm. And when they got pulled off the course because of the bombing, he told Rick what his plans were, and right then and there they decided there's no way this is how Team Hoyt finishes. We're coming back. They came back in 2014. They showed the world just how strong Boston is, and that was their last race, and it was 10 years ago.
That's so what do you have sp uh, planned for this race? Obviously, things are a little different this year, but how do we keep the momentum going, and, and what do you have planned? So a few things. We, we try and find some really good runners to come and join <laughs> us. Um, but we actually um, we have an honorary bib, and this year there's something really cool that's going to happen. That honorary bib allows us to put a duo into the race. And this year we wanted to find a duo that did something that Rick would always say. Rick said to Dad, you know, if I wasn't disabled and I had the opportunity to get up out of this chair, I'd put you in the chair and I would push you. So this year we actually have a daughter pushing her father with that honorary bib oh. to honor their memory 10 years later. So Chrissy and, and Bill Davidson are going to be um, taking that honorary bib and 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 being pushed in the marathon. Yeah. We, we also have some special gear this year. We have our, our Team Hoyt hats with a 10th anniversary, but there's actually a picture of Dad and Rick finishing 10 years ago. Um, and this is the actual finish right here. Incredible. Um, and then the singlets um, that all of our runners, including Chris, will be wearing are actually going to have um, Dad and Rick on the front with their 10-year anniversary. So we're really trying to... Um, keep that memory alive of, of just how strong the Hoyt family's connection to the marathon is. Why did yeah. you want, Chris, and we're like, before we go, why did yeah. you want to run with this team, of all the teams? I mean, growing up in southern New Hampshire, right, whenever Bob Lobel had the highlights every marathon Monday, it was uh, men's winner, women's winner, wheelchair, Hoyt. Yeah. Right. And, and then going to BC undergrad all those years, just seeing the race being caught up with the energy. I explain the Hoyt family to my son and I can't do it without getting choked up because that's where it all started, a father's love for his son. Absolutely. So it means the world to me. I've done my best. I can't wait to represent the organization on Monday. And also Monday morning while I'm running, you at home can watch and find out about Chrissy and Bill Davidson. I interviewed her. It's it's a remarkable story. And they're so proud to be representing the Hoyt Foundation as well. I don't think there's anyone more synonymous with the with the marathon than your family. It's just what you guys have done. And another yeah. cool thing that's happening this year, my son Troy is actually running his fourth Boston, and the BAA has graciously um, selected him to be the starter oh. for the duo hand cycle division so that he can do that in Rick's honor this so year. So great. Incredible. Good luck. Incredible. Don't let him down. Don't I, let him down. <laughs> right, well, Russ, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. It means the world. Yeah, quick break. We'll be right back. I'm going to try my best and run for Team Hoyt. And while their advocacy for disabled individuals is well known, you may not realize the work they do to support all students. I actually had a chance to stop in at Hajar Elementary in Bill Ricca. Russ Hoyt teaching kids the importance of self-belief and that yes-you-can spirit. You can see the kids are inspired to do things academically, physically, emotionally. People would make fun of me for me doing something wrong, but since I learned about this, that would mean just because people don't think you can do it doesn't mean you can't. When I have something like a hard move or we're learning something new in dance, I could just try my hardest. Yeah, love those fourth graders. The Hoyt Foundation gives several of these inspirational talks every year to schools around the area. They even traveled to Kentucky recently to give one of those. And coming up on Marathon Monday, the Hoyt family legacy lives on. You're actually going to see a woman running for Team Hoyt who, while pushing her dad. We're going to tell you all about the challenges they've had to overcome just to get to this point. It's part of our team coverage of the 128th Boston Marathon. Monday morning. Yeah, such a great family. They were always the highlight of the marathon for me, yeah. watching the Hoyts go by. And right. I just love that they're still doing it even after they're gone. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a big one because it's the 10 year anniversary of the last time Dick and Rick ran together. This Monday's race, a young man from Newton couldn't wait to join the rank of runners, which is why he's not sparing one single day. WBZ's Julie McDonald explains. And I saw that the date fell on April 15th, and I was like, this is perfect, I'm going to do it. Growing up along the historic Boston Marathon route, Newton native Spencer Bernstein knew he'd love to be a part of it. He finally can, turning 18 on Marathon Monday. I'll be able to celebrate after, but I really want Monday to be about Preston. Running toward the finish line on his first legal day as an adult, Spencer's thoughts will be flooded by the past.
precious memories of a friend whose spirit will stay 15. And he was just so much fun to be around, just the most outgoing and charismatic person. Preston Settles collapsed during a basketball game in 2022. He had hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The thickened heart muscle condition often goes undiagnosed without symptoms. Over those next three weeks, it was really difficult to see kind of his downhill progression. And sometimes you heard some good news and then there was a lot more bad news. His death was devastating for the many, many family and friends who adored the boy. And now Spencer will run the marathon to turn something so bad into good, protecting others. I would write his initials on my wrist and stuff like that. And then when the marathon came around, I'm like, this is for Preston, this is it. Spencer has twice surpassed his fundraising goal, donating more than $16,000 to speeding up the detection of and care for people with the heart condition. You know, he would, he would love it and he would think that this is such a great honor to him and I know that he's gonna be watching me on Monday. Julie McDonald, WBZ News. Whether it be 26 miles or 26 days, Every marathon finisher is a survivor, but only one can say he competed on the hit CBS show. Survivor really is just like running, all about just getting to the next stage, you know, whether it's mile to mile, day to day, vote to vote. Charlie Davis is a Boston College law student, a former collegiate runner for Harvard, and a mass native competing on the current season of Survivor. Any good runner will tell you that a marathon is a totally different beast than anything you've ever done before. That includes trying to outlast 18 competitors on the island of Fiji. You're on zero fuel the entire time you're out there, but the hardest part about the game is always the people. Come Monday, the only person he will compete with is himself. The hardest part about the marathon is holding yourself back that whole time. He is running to raise money for Casa Myrna, an area nonprofit working to end domestic violence. They run the domestic violence hotline in the Massachusetts. His Boston College classmate ran for them last year. Now they are the beat in his step. What is your pump up channel? Oh my gosh, go to song is tough. I, I'm going to give you a go to album, which okay. is uh, Reputation by Taylor Swift. Just got some really, really good intense songs. It's like ready for it. Look what you made me do. Honestly, I think there's an art to to making a marathon playlist. On the show, Davis had a music competition with the tribe mate. He named more than a hundred Taylor Swift songs. All right, so did you win? Oh, you know, I can't tell you oh, that. Come on, you. come on. I'm in law school. I know what an NDA is. Come on. <laughs> now his friends and fans will be watching him Monday. There's no vote outs in the marathon, but you can certainly take yourself out of the race if you make some mistakes. All right, what is harder, winning Survivor, finishing the marathon? You're going to have to talk to me on Monday about that. We will have to see if the Marathon Tribe has spoken. In Boston, I'm Mike Sullivan, WBZ News.